Number 7. Airlander 10 The Airlander 10 tells the story of a design that's unintentionally hilarious. According to the airport technology website, the Airlander 10 is an ultra-low emission aircraft capable of cutting GHG from long-haul and short-haul flights by 90% according to HAV, based on reimagining the 20th century airship. The Airlander 10 will one day be able to take 200 passengers on a journey up to 1,400 miles away. While this sounds like an incredible project, the outward appearance of the Airlander 10 has earned it a less than flattering nickname. <laughs> Known as the Flying Bum, the Airlander 10 earned this name after photos of the ship were shared on social media websites. While the ship is getting publicity for its look, it's not actually ready for service just yet. Some news reports say that the Airlander 10 might debut in 2025 or 2027. For now, it's still the butt of jokes on social media. Number 6. The Hyatt Regency Hotel Skywalk Disaster On July 17, 1981, the Hyatt Regency Hotel in Kansas City, Missouri held a huge event called a Tea Dance for Residents. It was supposed to be a fun, lively indoor event held from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m., which provided citizens with an escape from the intense Kansas City summer heat. Those who attended enjoyed refreshments, food, music, and dancing in the Hyatt Regency Hotel's open-air atrium. It was still a relatively new building that featured impressive indoor skywalks. Those skywalks spanned across the hotel, and it appeared as if they were almost floating in the air. They were designed to wow and amaze guests immediately as they walked into the atrium. There were three skywalks total in the hotel above the atrium. People thought they were amazing sights in the Hyatt Regency Hotel. The walkways were 120 feet long, and they weighed about 36 tons each. But those skywalks had a dirty, hidden secret. Their construction involved poor decisions and major corners being cut. They were nothing more than hanging, ticking time bombs. On July 17, 1981, 1,500 people were having fun, enjoying the tea dance when tragedy hit around 7.05 p.m. Two of the skywalks suddenly collapsed and crashed into the atrium below. People at the event quickly launched into action. They tried searching for victims under the mess of concrete, steel, and glass that rained down. First responders arrived at the scene as fast as possible. Kansas City hospitals were overwhelmed with an influx of victims with injuries. The hospital soon realized that they needed large amounts of blood for transfusions. To meet the need, the people of Kansas City stepped up to the plate after hearing of the disaster. They made their way to several locations to donate their blood with some waiting up to three hours to donate. Back at the hotel, first responders called in reinforcements. Construction equipment and experienced crews were called in to move the wreckage that pinned victims down. Heavy machinery was first used to try and remove the entrance to the hotel so they could get the large equipment inside the Hyatt Regency. The clock was ticking to get to those that were still trapped, though. Crews soon realized that their equipment wasn't able to lift the tons of debris. Luckily, a construction site was nearby and cranes were brought in to try and lift the rubble. The crews then started moving the wreckage. Meanwhile, a conference room in the hotel had to be used as a makeshift morgue. First responders and others that helped were scarred by the horrifying scene. Crews worked well into the night to save survivors. While the community mourned their losses, there were several pressing questions. Why did the skywalks collapse? An investigation was launched into the disaster at the Hyatt Regency Hotel. A structural engineer and the deferral government were also brought into the investigation. The main issue was traced back to 1979 when the Hyatt Regency Hotel was still under construction. The results were beyond shocking. The designs for the hangar rod connections used in the skywalks were changed last minute. The fabricator and engineering team were in communication, but the rods that held the skywalk up were changed 
and the result was dangerous. The rods were installed, but they couldn't properly hold the intense weight of the skywalks. They also didn't meet code requirements and somehow were still installed. If just one of the rods failed, they'd all fail, and that's exactly how the 1981 disaster occurred. During the construction of the hotel in 1979, a portion of the roof collapsed. The connections in the roof failed, and this should have been a warning sign for those involved in the construction. But construction continued without a care. It was November 1984 when the structural engineers were finally found guilty of gross negligence. Forty years after the disaster, a memorial to the victims was erected in Kansas City. The memorial is located near what once was the Hyatt Regency Hotel. Number 5. The St. Francis Dam The St. Francis Dam was situated 40 miles northwest of Los Angeles, California in the San Francisco Canyon of the Sierra Polona Mountains. Built between 1924 and 1926, the dam's main purpose was to serve as a storage reservoir for the Los Angeles aqueduct system. William Mulholland oversaw the construction. Described as a self-taught engineer, Mulholland supervised embankment dams being built all over California. But the St. Francis Dam was a different, unique type of project. It was a concrete gravity dam that was a first for Mulholland. The project was plagued by countless poor decisions made by Mulholland and his associates. The design of the dam wasn't even right for the location. The wrong kind of concrete was also used in its structure. Changes to the size of the dam during construction threatened the stability to hold water in the reservoir. Having someone or a group come in to study the stability and then making necessary changes would have been costly. So nothing was done to address these pressing issues. Cracks were also discovered in the dam but were simply dismissed as typical dam cracks. On March 12, 1928, the dam collapsed entirely and unleashed over 12 billion gallons of water that was held in the reservoir. The rushing water created a 140-foot wave of destruction. Over 400 people were killed, and it was reported that bodies were discovered as far south as Mexico. The dam was never rebuilt after the initial disaster. Investigations were made and Mulholland went on to admit, don't blame anyone else, you know you can just fasten it on me. If there was human error, I was the human. Have you ever heard of any other major engineering mistakes? Let us know in the comments below, and if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. Number 4. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge The Tacoma Narrows Bridge was finished in 1940 and allowed people to drive from Tacoma, Washington to the Kitsap Peninsula, which spanned over Puget Sound. It was the third largest suspension bridge in the world, measuring 2,800 feet in length. Construction started in 1938, and those who worked on the bridge said it would sometimes move during windy weather. The bridge was soon referred to as Galloping Gertie by workers. Tragedy soon struck on November 7, 1940. A windstorm with gusts reaching up to 42 miles per hour saw the bridge basically twist from side to side. The bridge eventually snapped and collapsed in on itself. What's amazing is that the incident was captured on film. Also, not a single person died. Cars were on the bridge, but people found a way to get off the bridge to safety before the collapse. The last person on the bridge was a man named Leonard Coatsworth. He was traveling with his pet dog when the bridge started cracking and the road swayed from side to side. Sadly, Coatsworth couldn't save his dog and had to crawl to safety. Some people tried to go back to the car to save the animal, but Coatsworth's dog was too terrified to move and even bit one of the people trying to help. Sadly, the bridge collapsed, taking the dog with it. This horrible event was investigated not long after it took place. The American Society of Engineers explained the issue. The strength caused by the motion eventually surpassed the strength of the suspender cables, snapping them one by one until the remainder were unable to support the mass of the bridge. What was the engineering mistake? The bridge was built with plate girders to support the roadbed, but it should have been built using web trusses. 
the web trusses would have done a better job of absorbing turbulence caused by wind gusts. This disastrous event would change the way suspension bridges were designed and built forever. The miracle of the incident is not a single human was killed. The bridge was later reopened in 1950, and a second bridge was built right next to it in 2007. Number 3. The 2017 Oroville Dam Incident Another California dam was in the news was the Oroville Dam situated southeast of Chico in Oroville. This dam was developed after some catastrophic flooding took place in the Yuba City area during the 1950s. Finished in 1967, the Oroville Dam was used for flood control, among other duties. The water it held was from Lake Oroville, the second largest reservoir in the state of California. Things eventually took a turn for the worse on February 11, 2017. It had been a wet year, and the spillway at the Oroville Dam was meant to be used for the first time since the dam had been built. The spillway allows extra water to be released and diverted somewhere else in a safe manner. But there was a major problem. On February 7, 2017, a massive hole in the main spillway was seen. Water was then sent down the spillway, and the situation got even worse. A case study of the incident stated, This was immediately followed by a rapid erosion of the foundation and adjacent ground, and progressive failure and removal of the chute slab in upstream and downstream directions. After hearing the news, officials decided to open the emergency spillway. That also caused major damage to the earthen embankment and caused more concerns on top of everything else. If things got to a critical point, the released water would be left practically uncontrolled. If this were the case, the damage would have been catastrophic. There were residents in Oroville and surrounding communities that were directly in the path of the water if the situation turned into a disaster. About 188,000 people were evacuated as a precautionary safety measure because water still had to be released. In the end, the damage led to $1.1 billion in repairs and cleanup. A report on the investigation said the following. The incident was fundamentally the result of a long-term systemic failure to recognize and properly address the deficiencies and warning signs which preceded the incident. It was also discovered that the person who designed the spillway was inexperienced and their design didn't match up with the best design practices at the time. Number 2. Chernobyl the worst nuclear accident in world history happened on April 26, 1986. The Chernobyl nuclear power plant was in what was once the Soviet Union and is now modern-day Ukraine. According to the World Nuclear Association, the disaster started during a test to determine how long turbines would spin and supply power to the main circulating pumps following a loss of main electrical power supply. During a test, a reactor grew unstable and an explosion took place. A second explosion then happened and two workers at the power plant were killed. The World Nuclear Association described Chernobyl as the largest uncontrolled radioactive release into the environment ever recorded for any civilian operation and large quantities of radioactive substances were released into the air for about 10 days. Thousands of people were exposed to harmful radiation, resulting in the confirmed deaths of 28 people. Hundreds of thousands had to be evacuated out of their homes and were never able to return. The exact number of those affected by radiation from this event is unknown, but the lingering radioactivity from the fallout remains in the area to this day. So what happened? A flawed reactor design paired with the poorly trained staff led to the explosion. The reactors didn't have a containment structure. That's a concrete and steel dome that covers the top of the reactor. They're designed to keep radiation inside the plant in case there's ever an accident. Over 500,000 people were involved in the cleanup efforts at Chernobyl. One of their duties was building the sarcophagus, which entombed the reactor site. 
it was built to contain the remaining radioactive material. And at number one, the Surfside Condominium Collapse. At 1.22 a.m. on June 24th, 2021, there was a partial building collapse at the Champlain Towers South Condominium located in Surfside, Florida. 98 people were killed in the accident. The condominium was 12 stories tall and was part of a three building complex. Champlain Towers South was the oldest of the three buildings and was built in 1981. Champlain Towers North was built a year later in 1982 with the most recent building being Champlain Towers East, built in 1994. First responders were called to the scene after the initial collapse. Over 30 people were discovered alive in the rubble with varying injuries. Search and rescue teams from Mexico and Israel joined in on the search efforts. The community also reached out in any way possible to help victims and their families recover from the traumatizing incident. What went wrong here? An investigation showed that the concrete columns and the pool deck in the Champlain Tower South were not properly built. An investigator said, the design of the structure at Champlain Tower South failed to meet the codes and standards applicable at the time of the original construction and also would not meet current codes and standards. A year later in 2022, a federal judge awarded a $1 billion settlement to the families of the victims affected. But a company from Dubai has plans in the works to build a 57-unit building on the previous Champagne Towers South site. The final report about what exactly caused the collapse may not be openly available to the public until as far as 2025. Do you have any other topics like this that we should make a video about? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.